Hey guys, welcome to Cope Decode. Today in this video, we will be looking into codes in Spring Boot. How do we enable codes? What was this codes issue? Because of which we have to implement the codes in our applications. Many months, many such topics related to codes in this video. And knowing codes is very important for interviews because you should know what was the issue and how did you resolve it. And most of the applications do use codes. Normally, any backend application cannot work without codes with the frontend application. So that is why understanding codes is very important. Now, what is codes? Codes is cross origin. Resource sharing. This is basically a policy, but it is also a violation of same origin policy of browsers. So let's first understand what is same origin policy, then understanding the course will be easy for us. So same origin policy in 1995 was introduced and was embedded into web browsers to prevent any malicious attack from hackers or attackers to any sensitive information stored in the servers in the backend. Now, before 1995, everything was perfectly fine. There was a beautiful web browser architecture of request and response. Web browsers used to send requests to the servers. Servers processes it and sends back the response to the browsers to the client at the end. So everything was perfectly fine. But then we understood that there must be some hackers and attackers sitting behind who can steal our sensitive information from the website. They can perform some unwanted actions also without our consent. Though they might not be legit users to do those particular kind of actions like deleting something, fetching something which is not allowed for them to fetch from our database. So for such kind of things, what in 1995 people came up was with the same origin policy. And that is automatically embedded into the every browser who supports it and you don't have to make it enabled. It is by default enabled in every browser. So this was a mechanism that was designed to protect you against the CSRF issue. So we must know much of the issues like CSRF cross-site request forgery issues, which was basically an attempt to take advantage of vulnerability due to difference in origins. To prevent that kind of issues like CSRF, same origin policy was introduced with the web browsers. So it was so fine. Initially, the applications were not that big. There was not much of the enterprise level applications by then. But later on, we found that this same origin policy is causing some issues. To prevent that, cross origin policy came into picture. So before that, the same origin, cross origin, let's first understand what is origin and let's see what is cross origin after that. So two URLs are said to have same origin if their protocols, port number and host are same. So, for example, here's a URL. It's http colon slash slash x dot y dot z slash something behind that. So, this http is your protocol. x dot y dot z com is dot com is your host. And if there must be a port number, then all the three together creates the origin. Now, two origins are said to same. If the, the thing highlighted in bold is the same, else they are not. So, even http dot slash slash x dot y dot z dot com slash z slash index dot html and page dot html both are from the same origin because their protocol and their host is same that was much about the origin now you know what is origin so same origin says if you have the same protocol the same port number same host all the, these three things are same then you belong to the same origin you can go ahead and access anything from that server which is hosted by x dot y dot com but if you are from different, you are not allowed to access anything. So good, so great, right? So this is so much sensible enough that if you are from the same port, then you can go and access. If you are not, you are the forged person. You are the wrong person. But later on, when we begin to develop some enterprise level applications, we have segregated the task of front-end and back-end people. Now, back-end people started developing their applications separately and front-end guys used to be a separate people or these two, two applications started usually becoming the two separate entities for us. Now, when we have mostly worked with the backend, we have always used the port numbers like the default one, 8080, 8081, 8082, 8090, such kind of ports we use. So, usually backends are deployed at localhost 8080 REST APIs. But when we try to work with the front-end applications like React, like Angular, so Angular usually works with the default one that is 4200. So, can you see what is origin here? Origin includes protocol. So, both protocols are same. It includes host. The host are same. Both are localhost. But can you see the port numbers? The port number is 8080 and 4200. So, here browser comes into picture and says, okay, I am hitting you with localhost 4200. But since you are hosting some REST APIs and resources which are protected at 8080. So, these both are different and same origin, origin policy is denied. It is violated and hence the API fails saying no access 
allow origin header is present on the requested resource and the origin that is front end 4200 is not allowed to access the local host 8080 because they are from different origins. So access control allow origin is denied. Now what we developers found is this is a problem. Now since I need my backend and front end to interact with each other in a real world, this is not possible that I should always follow the same origin policy. So for that we have come up with a solution named as course. That is cross origin resource sharing. Please allow the cross origin to share my resources hosted at the back end to with the front end. But then same origin policy says, see, I was there for your security. If you are violating your security and enabling the cross origin resource sharing, now you as a backend will be responsible for any attacks that is done to your backend application. And that is why we mostly use the Spring security because we have already violated the same origin policy. So now the security becomes our problem because browser was initially giving you the security. But now you have decided to make your front end and back end separate. So now this is your responsibility and you have to make the spring security intact enough to prevent forgeries and CSRF type of issues. Now in Spring Boot, how do we implement it? So we implement it using either a cross origin only annotation or we started sending a header. So access control around origin is a header which says okay Allow this particular host in your header. Whenever localhost 4200 hits us, the backend, backend responds with a header. The header says, allow the 4200. So whenever the response comes and says, okay, now the resource server itself is saying, I am safe with 4200 port number. So I can allow this to work. So this is how I, I put a kind of exception with the browser that please allow us. Now there are two ways to uh, declare this origin. That is, you can use the hpp.x.y.com or you can use a wildcard star. So whenever you use wildcard.star, everything will be allowed and then your secret security should be capable enough to prevent the hackers. So these are the two ways to send it in the headers. Now how cross origin works internally? The cross origin resource sharing is an HTTP mechanism that uses additional HTTP headers. So if you can see, this is an HTTP header, additional HTTP header. This is used to grant the browsers the permission to access resources from servers and the origin different from the website origin. So server origin is localhost 8080. Website origin is localhost 4200. To tell browsers that please grant the front end access to back end, you provide an extra HTTP header with the name of allow access control allow origin. Now, using course headers, you inform the browsers that resources from another origin have the right to access your page. So, with course header, you say that browser, this origin that I have told you and I have added here is a legit user. So, please allow it. Now, but this is, can you see a problem here? If I use HTTP colon slash slash localhost 4200 as the allowed one. But your front end is not, not always going to be at your local. It is going to deploy at prod, deploy at dev, deploy at test at multiple places where port number, the URLs, everything is going to change. So just embedding and hard coding here is not a solution. You can enable with a wildcard and then use Spring Security judiciously. So that is how you can always use the headers to use the codes. There are many, many ways also in Spring Boot to allow what get, put, post, delete is allowed that particular origin. If you want to know all such things, how we can do that in Spring Security, or if you want to know more about any of such policies, you have to let me know in the comment section. Then the next video, I'll be creating on how to implement this CORS in your Spring Boot application. Thank you.